NASA wants Americans back on the moon by 2026. The original plan? Launch 10 to 15 tanker flights just to fuel one lunar starship. SpaceX's engineers found a radical shortcut that could slash that number in half, maybe more. But here's what nobody's talking about. This simplified approach might not just save time and money. It could be the difference between beating China to the lunar South Pole or watching them plant their flag first. What did SpaceX figure out that changes everything? Let's dive right in. SpaceX promised NASA a lunar lander. What they didn't promise was simple. The current architecture requires launching a propellant depot into orbit, then sending up tanker after tanker. Estimates range from 10 to 15 flights just to fill that depot. Only then can the lunar starship launch, dock, refuel, and head toward the moon. It's an orbital ballet that's never been attempted at this scale. Every single one of those tanker flights is a potential failure point. Every docking maneuver is a risk. Every propellant transfer is unproven technology. NASA's watching the calendar, and China's Long March 10 rocket isn't standing still. But SpaceX's recent statement to NASA revealed something interesting. We've shared ideas on how to simplify the mission to align with national priorities. Translation, they found shortcuts. And the first one is almost painfully obvious once you hear it. What if Starship didn't have to come back? The fully reusable Starship is a engineering marvel, but it's also carrying a massive amount of hardware that only matters if you're planning to survive re-entry. Those four massive flaps, each one weighs over a ton. The heat shield tiles, thousands of them, each adding weight and complexity. The header tanks, the sophisticated guidance system for landing, all of it exists for one purpose, bringing the ship home intact. Strip all that away and you're left with something fascinating, an expendable starship that could cut the refueling requirements by 50%. Think about what that means. Instead of 10 tanker flights, maybe you need five. Instead of months of orbital operations, maybe weeks. The booster still comes back. That's where the expensive Raptor engines live. But the upper stage burns up after delivering its payload. Is this giving up on the dream of full reusability? Actually, it's the opposite. It's acknowledging that sometimes the fastest path forward isn't a straight line. Blue Origin... ULA, Arion Space, they've all built successful businesses on expendable rockets. SpaceX could have launched payloads to orbit years earlier if they'd started with an expendable upper stage and worked backward toward full reusability. Instead, they chose the harder path first. Now they're reconsidering. And honestly, for a moon landing in 2026, it might be the only realistic option. But there's a second approach that's even more elegant, and it goes in the complete opposite direction. Instead of making Starship expendable, what if you made it smaller? Here's the problem with the current design. Starship HLS needs six powerful Raptor engines and roughly 30 tons of tank structure just to perform the translunar injection burn, the big push that sends it from Earth orbit toward the moon. That's a lot of hardware for one burn. After that, dead weight. Those engines and tanks contribute nothing during lunar descent, nothing during the surface stay, nothing during ascent. They're just along for the ride, dragging down efficiency at every step. The proposal is surgical in its simplicity. Don't make Starship HLS do its own translunar injection. Instead, launch a shorter, stubbier version of the lander into low Earth orbit. Separately, launch what's called a translunar tug, basically a propulsion stage whose only job is to do that one big burn. They dock. The tug fires. Once the stack reaches lunar orbit, the tug's job is done. The stubby HLS only needs about 400 tons of propellant to handle descent and ascent, compared to the much larger fuel load required by the current design. The benefits cascade from there. A shorter vehicle has a lower center of gravity, which means better landing stability. The crew elevator doesn't need to reach as far. 
the delta V margin between lunar orbit and the surface jumps to nearly 700 meters per second, giving mission planners serious operational flexibility. Most importantly, fewer tanker launches, simpler logistics, faster timeline. Of course, there's a catch. You're now performing a high-energy burn with two massive spacecraft docked together. No one's ever done that before. The docking system needs to handle multi-minute, high-thrust burns without flexing or separating. The guidance software needs to be flawless. One miscalculation and you've got two vehicles tumbling through space. But here's what makes this approach brilliant. You're not building a one-off vehicle just for early Artemis missions. You're creating a reusable crew shuttle that works for the moon and with modifications for Mars. You're establishing a pattern, lightweight shuttle for crew, heavy cargo ship for equipment that scales to long-term exploration. And you're doing it with components SpaceX is already producing. Same engines, same tanks, same production lines. It's not a patch, it's architecture. Then there's the star kicker concept, which sounds like something from science fiction, but is actually just smart engineering. Picture a starship with no nose cone, no payload bay, just engines and fuel tanks with a mounting adapter on top. Its only job? Act as a massive third stage assembled in orbit. You launch the lunar starship and refuel it completely. Separately, you launch the star kicker and top that off too. Dock them together, star kicker on the bottom, and you've essentially built a three-stage rocket in space instead of on the pad. When everything's ready, the star kicker lights up and gives the entire stack an enormous velocity boost, potentially all the way to lunar orbit. After that burn, the star kicker is spent. Not destroyed, just stranded in an awkward orbit with empty tanks. For that mission, it's treated as expendable. The lunar starship continues on, lands the crew, supports surface operations, and then flies all the way back to Earth orbit using only its own engines. No separate ascent stage, no return vehicle, just brute force and a lot of fuel. It's modular spacecraft design taken to its logical extreme. Starship isn't one vehicle. It's Lego blocks you can assemble different ways depending on the mission. Now, SpaceX isn't the only company thinking about simplified lunar architectures. Blue Origin's approach with their Blue Moon Lander is worth examining because it highlights a fundamental philosophical difference. Blue Moon Mark II is still ambitious. It still requires orbital refueling. It still needs a lunar tug. But everything operates at a more manageable scale. The lander uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen, which means at least four tanker flights and a reusable cis-lunar transporter to deliver fuel to lunar orbit. Blue Origin has to develop the lander, the tanker, and the transporter, three major systems, before the first crewed landing. There's a proposed workaround that's actually quite clever. Use an expendable SpaceX Starship to place a complete Blue Moon stack, Lander plus Centaur 5 upper stage, into low Earth orbit. Strip about three tons of dry mass from Blue Moon, and the Centaur 5 can push it all the way to the Moon without any additional refueling. Once Blue Moon reaches the near rectilinear halo orbit, Orion docks directly with it, skipping Gateway entirely. It's a hybrid approach that leverages SpaceX's heavy lift capacity while letting Blue Origin focus on what they do best, precision landing systems and hydrogen-oxygen propulsion. But here's the uncomfortable truth NASA isn't saying out loud. The agency has two objectives, and they're in tension with each other. First, plant boots and flags at the lunar south pole. Second, establish a permanent human presence. The first goal is a PR victory. The second is the actual mission. And achieving both simultaneously with the current architecture, SLS, Orion, Gateway, multiple landers from multiple contractors, is becoming increasingly difficult to defend. Elon Musk's recent comment is telling, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission, Mark my words. He's not talking about Artemis 3 specifically. 
He's talking about the long game. If Starship can launch crew, refuel in orbit, land on the moon, and return to Earth all by itself, what exactly do you need the rest of the architecture for? It's a question NASA will have to answer, and the clock is ticking. So here's where we stand. SpaceX has laid out three distinct paths to simplify the moon mission. Go expendable and cut tanker flights in half, build a stubby lander with a separate tug, or use the star kicker concept to assemble a multi-stage rocket in orbit. Each approach has trade-offs, but they all share one thing in common. They're faster than the original plan. Meanwhile, China's preparing their Long March 10 rocket and training Taikonauts for lunar surface operations. They're not dealing with congressional budget battles or contractor disputes. They have a target date, and they're moving toward it. The real question isn't whether SpaceX can simplify the mission. They've already shown multiple ways to do it. The question is whether NASA has the institutional flexibility to change course midstream. Can they accept that the perfect architecture might be the enemy of the actual mission? Because here's the truth. Whoever lands first doesn't just win a symbolic victory. They establish precedent. They demonstrate capability. They show the world what's possible when you commit to a goal and execute. 2026 is 24 months away. The decisions made in the next few quarters will determine whether American astronauts or Chinese taikonauts are the first to explore the lunar South Pole in this generation. SpaceX has given NASA the shortcuts. Now we'll see if NASA takes them. What do you think? Should NASA go with a simplified approach or stick with the original plan? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown helped you understand the moon race better, hit that like button and share this with anyone following space exploration. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss what happens next, because this story is far from over.